hot off the printer. A Navy aircraft takes flight with a safety-critical additive manufactured part for the first time. Plus, manning the unmanned, the Navy stands up its first unmanned patrol squadron. And that's a wrap for the F-35C Lightning II. The aircraft soars to success during its final at-sea trials. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Proof. It was an exciting few days at sea for the F-35 Lightning II program. The F-35C Lightning II carrier variant completed its third and final phase of developmental test aboard USS George Washington. Test teams from Naval Air Station Patuxent River used two F-35C aircraft to complete more than 600 test points, logging close to 40 flight hours over the course of 10 days. The goal was to test the aircraft's carrier suitability, further expand the F-35C's operating envelope, and evaluate its integration with carrier air and deck operations. F-35 is going to bring capabilities to the fleet that we haven't had at this point, or up to this point. So, a stealth platform with a full mission system suite aboard it that is uh, fused together and able and capable of sharing that information across platforms for the strike group is, is something that we have not had up to this point and folks should be excited about. The F-35's first developmental test at sea took place aboard USS Nimitz in 2014 followed by DT-2 aboard USS Dwight D. Eisenhower in 2015. Naval aircraft undergo three developmental test phases to identify mission-critical issues and ensure the aircraft meets specifications well ahead of their scheduled initial operating capability. The F-35C is scheduled to be delivered to the fleet in 2018. It was a history-making moment for one of the Navy's newest acquisition programs. The MQ-4C Triton is approved for low-rate initial production, the first step of the production and deployment phase. The news comes only weeks before the arrival of the first commanding officer to VUP-19, the first Triton unmanned patrol squadron. The assumption of command marks the transition from a pre-establishment unit to an operational squadron. Once fully operational, VUP-19 will control Triton missions from one of three mission control stations at Naval Air Station Jacksonville, Florida, and provide 24-hour persistent surveillance and reconnaissance across the globe. People that, that are coming to uh, VUP-19 will have come from P-8, P-3, and EP-3 squadrons, so they'll have already learned what it's like to fly in the plane and provide a product or a capability for fleet commanders. Uh, throughout the world, but when they come to VUB P-19, they're going to be doing the same mission uh, remotely and providing even more of a product. So it's going to be incredible to see that delivered to the fleet. This truly is something brand new, not only in the, the capabilities, but also in the way that we're going to operate it. And, and that in itself is, is exciting. Anybody who comes to this squadron will have the chance to lay the groundwork for really a, a next step in, in maritime patrol and reconnaissance. If you're not excited about that then, and you're truly an operator, then there's not much to make you excited. VUP-19 was stood up in 2014. Since that time, operators assigned to the squadron received training at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland. Triton is expected to deploy in fiscal year 2018. You can learn more about VUP-19 and what it's like to be a Triton operator by visiting our website at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. The Naval Air Systems Command is flying into the future one manufactured part at a time. An MV-22B Osprey completed a successful flight demonstration of a flight-critical aircraft component built using additive manufacturing techniques. Additive manufacturing uses digital 3D design data to build components in layers of metal, plastic, and other materials. In this case, the 3D printed part was made from titanium. It is one of four link and fitting assemblies that attach the engine cell to the wing. The use of an additive manufactured flight critical part is a big step towards incorporating this technology into the future fleet. One of the, the big points of this demonstration was to establish that this can be done, um, to showcase that printing a flight critical part is possible. What that does is it, it sends a strong message to the whole organization that if we can print a flight critical structural part, we can then do those less critical items knowing that, that this process is, is sound. If you look at our readiness posture and you look at, kind of at what we need to do to accelerate, um, we need to improve not only how, how we get our airplanes back to the fleet and how we sustain them right now, but we need new capabilities out there faster. An additive is a technology that enables that. You can learn more about Navair's additive manufacturing efforts by visiting our website at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. 
the Marine Corps' newest heavy lift helicopter is proving it's worth its weight in loads. The CH-53K King Stallion successfully completed an external lift of a 27,000-pound payload at Sikorsky's Developmental Flight Test Center in West Palm Beach, Florida in June. The out-of-ground effect external load test is the most stressful of lift conditions for a helicopter from a power-required standpoint. For this test, the King Stallion hovered at 100 feet above ground, an altitude greater than its 79-foot main rotor diameter. At this altitude, power demand greatly increases due to loss of benefit of ground effect. With the delivery of a fourth aircraft to Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland, the King Stallion is well on its way to achieving Milestone C and entering production. The aircraft is set to replace its predecessor, CH-53E. And speaking of the CH-53E, the Marine Corps has begun a full reset of its current inventory. The goal is to increase the number of operationally fit aircraft and address issues related to normal wear and tear on the aging Super Stallion. The reset of all 147 aircraft is expected to take three years. In addition to improving the aircraft's physical condition, the reset will tackle other readiness issues, including inaccurate manuals, equipment shortfalls, and maintainer training. The CH-53E is the Marine Corps' primary heavy lift helicopter and has been in service for more than 30 years. Congratulations to the winners of the first annual NAVAIR Data Challenge. Team Data Innovations Negating Obsolescence, or DINO, from Cherry Point, North Carolina, was selected from 33 other teams across the organization. Their project used predictive modeling and root cause analysis methods to improve Vector, a web-based tool used to identify aircraft parts affecting readiness. Thanks to the team's efforts, the tool can now answer why the part is affecting readiness and what needs to be done to fix the issue. Data Challenge began early in 2016, and teams had the past several months to find ways of using data sources to improve aircraft readiness. Members of the NAVAIR workforce can find more information on the Data Challenge by visiting the Data Challenge community on my site. And that's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.